Has a Chicago Cubs pitcher ever thrown a perfect game? And the answer is coming up on an all new Locked On Cubs. Happy Tuesday. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, good morning, happy Tuesday. Welcome on it. I'm Andrew Vellis and I'm your host. This is indeed Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Great to have you along with us. Great to be with you here on a wonderful Tuesday spring morning. Thank you for joining us today. Want to ask you to engage with us on social media, please, at Chicago Cubs PA, at Locked On Cubs. Would love to have you check out our YouTube page as well at Locked On Cubs on YouTube. So proud and thankful of you guys. have grown that from zero to over 750 subscribers since we started this program in December. So, so cool of you. Thank you for being part of the Locked On family. Thank you for letting me be part of the Locked On family as well. Cubs with a split in Colorado over the weekend. Hey, listen, we've talked about this a lot, and it is not an easy thing to do, but... If you can play 500 ball on the road in Major League Baseball, you are doing a good thing. And Coors Field is not an easy place to play. Not at all. So the fact that the Cubs were able to get two of four against the Rockies was great. Miss Chris Bryant, what do you think he looks like uh, in the black and purple? You like it or no? We need your help today, Locked On fam. Do you have your Sherlock Holmes hats ready? Because we've got a crazy mystery to solve. We're also going to continue gallivanting around Wrigleyville, highlighting the best bars in the Wrigley Field area. But first, I know you've heard this right now, but I have to revisit because this is nuts to me. Last week, Clayton Kershaw had a perfect game brewing through seven innings while using only 80 pitches to do so. Yes, that's right. You heard me correctly. 80. The efficiency level there is insane. So what happened? Why am I talking about this now? Dodgers manager Dave Roberts yanked the L.A. stud in favor of the bullpen after those seven innings. Would have, should have, could have been his second no-no, Kershaw, I mean, first since 2014. And first career perfecto, but was not given the opportunity. Why, you ask? That's a hell of a good question. Injuries last year, abbreviated spring training. He had the forearm plasma injections last October. Not ready to beef up the workload, yada, yada, yada. Clayton Kershaw, I tip my cap to him, ultimate professional. Said all the right things after the fact, too. And I quote, blame it on the lockout. Blame it on me not picking up a baseball till January. My slider was horrible the last two innings. It didn't have the bite. It was time, end quote. Maybe this was the right move for the Dodgers and Dave Roberts. Maybe, but frustrating nonetheless as a fan especially. We were robbed of the chance to see Major League Baseball history. So now you have the backstory on it all. Locked on Cubs had to take a look because of this. It piqued my interest of the best pitching performances in Cubs history. No, no's perfect games. Not quite. Not one time has a Cubs pitcher in their long and illustrious history ever gone 27 up and 27 down. Never. Although several players have come close, evidenced by the 16 single pitcher no hitters in the Cubs record books. And you may recall, this shouldn't be asterisk or anything. It's just a little different, maybe in a category of its own. The one and only combined no-no that came just last year. Remember this? Kind of uh, overshadowed an otherwise crappy year. But Zach Davies, Ryan Tapera, Andrew Chafin, and Craig Kimbrell 
nailed the Dodgers at uh, in L.A. at Chavez Ravine. Forgot about that one, didn't you? A little group no-hitter. Prior to that, it was Alec Mills tossing a no-hitter in an empty Miller Park up in Milwaukee and one of the unlikeliest no-hitters you'll ever see. Did you forget about that one from a couple of years ago? There's a couple more we'll get to here as well. want to thank you real quick as we run through these no-nos for making us your first listen here today. Honestly, Lockdown fam, you guys are awesome. Being part of this group and having you be a part of the Lockdown fam means so much. So let's go back to 2015, 2016, Jake Arrieta era. We know how darn good he was. He tossed a pair. Do you recall those? That was a guy that you felt really could have had perfect game stuff or did have perfect game stuff. Just never spun one. I mean, listen, it's so hard. Everything has to go right. I, I understand that. No doubt he easily could have been the first to toss that elusive Cubs perfect game. Too filthy during that time, right? First bit of perfection, also against the Dodgers. Dodgers seem to be involved in this so often. Um, no hitter against the Dodgers was, the, the perfect game was out of question early. Starlin Castro made an error in the third inning. And then a sixth inning walk was the only other uh, LA base runner to reach against Arietta who turned in a second half for the ages that year. We all know the, the story there as the Cubs surged into October. But he did it again then. You recall that one. His second no-hit effort was a bloodbath in Cincinnati. This was a weird one. 16 to nothing, the Cubs won that ball game. Uh, the Cubs actually set the modern era record for most runs scored in a no-hitter that game, beating Cincy 16 to nothing. Sorry, Jeff Carr. He wasn't really even at his best that day, which is kind of the ridiculous part, but he settled in put it on cruise control, and had another unbelievable outing, a no-hitter. Okay, let's keep cruising back. This is fun. The, the the Kershaw saga piqued my interest here, and I want to keep cruising back, take a look at some of the, the best Cubs pitching performances that we've ever seen, although they've never spun a perfect game. How about 2008, Big Z, good memory, right? Um, prior to the Ariettas, we have to go back to 2008, which is now 15 years ago already for Big Z. Insane. Revisit Carlos Umbrano's very quirky no-hitter. Thanks to the hurricane, Cubs played Houston in Milwaukee at Miller Park. And uh, the fiery right-hander dazzled en route to the Cubs' first no-hitter at that time since Milt Pappas, 1972. Love, uh, love Len Casper's call of that Zambrano no-hitter. So, we went down memory lane. I ask you this, Locked On Cubs family, who will be the first and next Cubs pitcher to throw a perfect game? Now, this is a tough one, and I want to tell you my thoughts on this first before you give me yours. Let us know yours. Let me know at Chicago Cubs PA, at Locked On Cubs, who in the Cubs staff now, might be in the minor leagues, has perfect game stuff. Given the landscape of this 2022 season, it's kind of hard to look at anybody in the Cubs rotation as, as having a legitimate shot at perfection. Now, the great radio voice of the Cubs, Pat Hughes, always says that's what he loves about coming to the ballpark every day because you will see something different every day that you potentially never seen before. And that's the beauty of baseball. Anything can happen. And he's right on the money there. I will say this, though. Um, you have to have some sort of swing and miss stuff or some degree of that, you know, maybe not as insanely dominant as Arietta was during that the World Series era. But the Cubs staff just not really assembled that way now. More contact ground ball kind of guys, which is great. I mean, we love that. But in terms of no hitter, perfect game stuff. Throw in the fact also that it's going to be a bit before starters are really even stretched out enough, a la Kershaw coming out of the game after seven perfecto. And it makes a Cubs pitcher throwing a perfect game even less likely this year. I mean, keep in mind, like go back to 1998. Also, Kerry Woods' 20 strikeout performance could easily be counted in one of the most dominant pitching performances in Cubs history, even though there was a hit, cheap one, under the glove of uh, at shortstop with Ricky Gutierrez at the plate for Houston. Uh, that 20 strikeout performance didn't even get the job done. It wasn't even a no-hitter, you know, although it was one of the best outings probably in baseball history, let alone Cubs history. But so when, who, will we, Cubs fans, ever see a perfect game 
thrown by a Chicago Cubs pitcher? And the answer is yes. I'm going to tell you who. It's good. My, this one might knock you off your stool a little bit here on a Tuesday morning. Jordan Wicks. And here is why. Wicks features the best changeup from last year's draft, a low 80s pitch with tumble. That's good movement. That's baseball term for good movement that earns plus plus grades from most scouts. And he sells it with the same arm speed in which he delivers the fastball, which is key. Anybody who's ever pitched will tell you that that arm speed is key between fastball and change. Good fastball sits 92, 93, 94. It can touch 97, has good carry. Improved slider, low 80s to go with that fastball and change up the dances all over the place. Also modified it into a harder cutter since becoming part of the Cubs organization as this uh, upper 70s curveball as well. So four pitch arsenal. Here's the key to Wicks too. And the scouts love this. Very little effort in his delivery and he repeats it well. If you're going to throw a perfect game or a no hitter, endurance, stamina, key, you're out there for all nine innings, right? Very repeatable. Easy delivery allows him to pound the strike zone and work on either side of the plate, okay? In addition to his advanced stuff and command, he also stands out with a ton of creativity and competitive, competitive, competitiveness on the mound. Comes with a super high floor as a near certain starter and might, according to some scouts, not require more than a year or two in the minors before he's Wrigley ready. There you have it, Locked On Cubs fans. First perfect game in Cubs history. Jordan Wicks, 2026, we'll say. Maybe sooner? Maybe. Are you ready to help me solve a good mystery? Because we've got a real doozy on our hands. I want to dive into that coming up shortly. Before we do, I want to take this time to remind you that betonline.net is your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, League reviews and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts. Locked on Cubs continues in a moment. Good morning, Locked On fam. Welcome back. I'm your host, Andrew Bellison at Chicago Cubs PA at Locked On Cubs. Want to thank you for taking the time to make us your first listen this morning. Each and every morning, we're free and available wherever you source your favorite cast. So please download us and check us out today. Also would love to have you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Locked On Cubs YouTube. Great content there. Love to have you as part of of the Locked On family. You might have heard a little bit, a little bit about this, but this is a strange one. And I mean that in every definition of the word strange. Ben Zobrist, have you heard about the ring saga? It's a noodle scratcher to say the least. Let's rewind back to the World Series era, uh, we'll call it for a moment. Ben Zobrist, integral part of that club. One of the good guys for sure, right? Kind of a strange departure from the team, if you recall. Family, marital issues, needed time, space. Then shortly after, okay, you might recall the story from last year um, about World Series MVP 2016, Ben Zobers putting his World Series championship ring up for auction. Do you recall hearing about this at all? Let me jog your memory. One of the most important rings in all of baseball history belonging to Ben Zobras, supposedly ends up at an auction house for auction. Immediately seemed weird as hell, and Zobras, through his agent, denied that he was selling the ring at that time, okay? So then we had conflicting reports. The auction house claimed the ring was in-house and ready to sell. Then we saw a social media post with a picture of Zo holding his ring. I have the ring, he said. So, who to believe? Do you remember all this? This is a strange story. So, what the hell happened? Well, the manufacturer of the Cubs World Series rings, Justin's, filed a federal lawsuit last week on Thursday against said auction house, 
and another independent collector over a replica ring bearing Zobra's name that the lawsuit claims was stolen. Hmm, another layer. Got your Sherlock hats on? The manufacturing company, which is Jostens, said the duplicate ring is worth about 75000 bucks, and they're seeking monetary damages to be determined at trial. So the auction company here was Heritage Auctions. Their attorney declined to comment on the particulars of this lawsuit or whether the ring in question was real or not. But when the dispute over the title to the ring began last summer, it was then removed from the auction block immediately and remained in Heritage's possession. So they pulled the auction right away. The ring did not change hands and the auction company kept the ring. Now, is this Ben Zobra's actual World Series ring gifted to him on ring night at Wrigley Field or is this a duplicate? What did Zobra say on the topic? He told his agent, and I quote, I had a conversation with him twice. This is his agent speaking. Uh, I said, are, are you sure you're not selling it? He said, no, it makes no sense. Why would I sell this ring? I'm never going to get rid of this ring. Never, 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 end quote. That was his agent, Scott Pacino. In this very strange, but unfortunately very true, only 2022 worthy story and saga, the auction house now essentially appears to be caught in the middle, while the consigner and Jostens both claim ownership to this ring, a question that now will be decided in court after the sides couldn't come to an agreement. So why did this extra ring get birthed somehow with Zobra's name on it, and is it his and is it not? Here's the deal. A lot of times players are able to order duplicate championship rings and they can wear them or display them while the real one or the one gifted, say, on ceremonial ring night the year after a championship is kept in a safe place, a safe at home, a safe deposit box at the bank. So it's feasible that players have a couple of copies of this ring purchased by them, the other copies, with their name on it that is essentially the same as the one they were given, the real one, we'll call it. So there's a few floating around. This one appears to be one of those copies or one of those float arounds. Long story short, we're pumped that Zoe has his bling still, allegedly. And while I obviously wasn't on the field, if somebody cares to throw me 75 grand for the ring that I was given, give me a holler at Chicago Cubs PA. We're going to continue our Wrigleyville bar tour. Great stops just feet away from the ballpark and highlight their best offerings coming up in a moment. Before we do, I want to thank you for making Lockdown Cubs your first listen. And for your next listen, we ask that you check out the Lockdown Now podcast. There's recaps of MLB games with analysis from our local experts, taking fans through the season like no other network. Free and available wherever you source your favorite cast. Hey, did your car take a dump? Tired of going to the mechanic? Tired of going to the dealer? Tired of overpaying for car parts at your local chain auto parts store? Well, check out rockauto.com. Save time and money. Use rockauto.com to save 30, 50, even 100% off the price of parts for your car. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers like us for over 20 years. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer, and they literally have everything you could need for your car. From brake parts to tail lamps to motor oil, even new carpet, it's insane. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your new car or truck. Right locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, I promise, at rockauto.com. Locked on Cubs rolls on after this.
Welcome back in, Locked On Cubs family. Happy Tuesday to you, and thank you for making this program, Locked On Cubs, your first listen of the day, free and available wherever you source your favorite cast. Send us a picture. Where are you listening today? At Chicago Cubs PA, at Locked On Cubs. Tag us on social. So we've been doing this fun thing last couple episodes, and I want to continue it today. We're highlighting the best spots to go in Wrigleyville before or after a ball game for food, for drink, for fun. What we've done is we have distanced these from the ballpark. So we giving, we're giving you their location in feet from the iconic Wrigley Field marquee. And our tour continues with Lucky Strike Social, just 272 feet away from the iconic Wrigley marquee. Have you checked out Lucky Strike Social in Wrigleyville? Awesome spot to go before a ball game. Two video walls multiple 4K TVs. They got an awesome late night bite menu in case you stumble in there after a night game. Slate of fun activities too. We talked about the batting cages and the arcade games at Sluggers. Awesome. Lucky Strike Social has bowling. They've got pool. They've got ping pong. So great. Also, if you don't want to mingle with the crowds and you want to have a little bit of alone time with a special group or a birthday or whatnot, They've got semi-private suites and private rooms available as well. Before the game, during the game, indoor seating, great spot, Lucky Strike Social. How about HVAC Pub? Just 328 feet from the iconic Wrigley Field marquee. Have you been to HVAC Pub? Food offerings here, very unique, very fun. The fans go for the pizza, and I suggest you do the same. Or a pizza town, right? Chicago Pizza It's our thing. They have some unusual pies here, though. This is not your traditional pepperoni sausage. You can get that, of course. Some of them, a breakfast pizza. Have you ever had a breakfast pizza? Corned beef and eggs on top of this breakfast pizza. Insane. It's worth noting about the HVAC pub that this is thin crust. This is tavern style, we'll call it. Okay? So if you're going looking for the big, you know, Thick, gimmicky, deep dish Chicago. Not here. HVAC pub, thin crust. Try the breakfast pizza, corned beef and eggs. Sounds weird? Give it a shot. Tickety group reservation packages for big special events like opening day and other holidays include guaranteed entry, preferred seating, bottomless pizza, well liquor, domestic beer. So always have specials going on. Make sure you check them out. How about the West Town? Bakery and Tap, just 335 feet from the Wrigley Marquee across the street in the Hotel Zachary. Good spot for a little breakfast, little beer, little coffee. Rush of caffeine for a pregame perk up doesn't hurt. Then you can just walk right across the street to the ballpark. They've got really, really good breakfast sandwiches. Awesome spots to sit. Super chill. Great pastries. They got boozy lattes. If you want to double dip, have your coffee and your cocktail all in one cup. That works. Uh, The bakery serves dark matter coffee and is housed inside Hotel Zachary. I don't know if you've had Dark Matter Coffee. Really good brand, really good product. And again, right across the street from the ballpark. Last stop for today, the Lucky Door Patio and Tap. This is spittable to the upper deck at Wrigley Field. What do fans go for? They've got specialty beers from McLean Craft Breweries available only at Lucky Door and This is, you know this, I'm a foodie and I've said this before, I'm a sucker for this, oversized German style pretzels with beer cheese. You have to have the pretzel lucky door. I'm telling you, that with a good beer, the best combo in the world. They also have dried salami chips and sausages, keg cocktails, they've got ciders, awesome spot, right by the ballpark, you will love it. Good appies, good beer, yada, 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 check it out. Want to thank you for tuning in with us today. I'm glad we solved a little Ben Zobers mystery. Cubs split in Colorado. They're back home uh, to face the Rays here in their next series as the season rolls on. Good start for the Cubs. I like it. Good things offensively. The pitching has been solid. Good to be back at Wrigley. And a little home cooking never hurt anybody. I want to thank you for making Lockdown Cubs your first listen this morning. Ask you to make your second listen, Lockdown MLB. Paul Francis, Paul Francis Sullivan, please call him Sully, brings you his unique perspective on the major leagues, both past and present. Free and available wherever you get your podcast, just like Locked on Cubs. We will see you manana. Until then, enjoy the ball game. This has been Locked on Cubs. I'm Andrew Bellison.